world can seem like an enormously unfamiliar, confusing, and scary place. Caught up in thoughts and feelings, we feel disconnected and incomplete. Assuming that life's fullness exists somewhere out there, that we're all separate individuals bound by personal limitations, and that we must be, do, or have more for lasting fulfillment. But the truth is, despite our limited appearance, there is no divide between our internal and external worlds. Right now, we are actually boundless. The wholeness and connection we are seeking. We are all that is. We are non-duality. Most of us are living from our unquestioned assumptions. Until something happens in our experience that causes us to question, to move from that place of unquestioned assumptions to acknowledging that something in our experience needs our attention. Something breaks open and in our own direct experience, we say to ourselves, I really don't know anything at all. There is a recognition of why there can't be an answer to be found here. If you come to terms with the fact that there is no answer, the, the quality of seeking has dissipated. The flame has gone out, so to speak. But beyond language, there is a wordless reality. Whatever it is that may appear, whatever it is that may not appear, it's all part and parcel. The necessary movements of consciousness as it unfolds itself and expresses itself in infinite form and variety, it's all just interacting with itself. And you don't need to be any one way. Who you fundamentally are is untouchable. Our usual orientation is one of being a separate, limited entity within this boundless universe, feeling very small and powerless, always craving a deep connection with the entirety of what is, seeking a way to heal the divide. The way we try to fix that is that we cling to and we push away. Instead, it's about the reality of non-grasping. Reality does not grasp. There's no aversion. You are this open and divided awareness and within you, as the great meditator, are many objects of meditation. And that's a noticing, not a doing. It's not a removing. It's not even an including really, because it is all inclusive already. Nothing is static. Everything is always shifting. Yet reality in and of itself, whatever it is, is constant. That's already the primary condition is that freedom. It is Nirvana. All you've done is trick yourself into thinking that you're not that. It's a kind of going, well, okay, let's investigate this. And you investigate what is my absolutely direct experience? It's just saying this. We can call it this, we can call it experience, we can call it awareness, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of words for it, but also no words can possibly catch it. It's like the sky, it's open, it's completely ungraspable, yet it appears graspable, just this whole moving river, always shifting, always changing, just completely fresh and new every single moment. And there's no grasping whatsoever involved in that. There appears to be a separate individual beings who have their own existence, separate from each other. The mind derives its knowledge from observation of the actual. However, knowledge itself is not actual. Nothing but a symbol of that which is beyond the symbol. There has to be a separate existence of something else for there to be a separate experience there, and there isn't. You can't find it anywhere. It's all one seamless flow. All is reality, all is life. Everything really is in the truest sense absolutely one with what you are. It's a radical inclusivity, unconditional acceptance. It's not about even trying to cultivate loving compassion. The awareness that you are is loving. It's all completely and utterly allowed. No matter what your mind is coming up with or telling you about it, it's all completely allowed in already. There's no division. Those notions we have about ourselves and, and, and life, they disintegrate because the hard truth is that they are concepts only, They're, they are constructs only. We're just trying to kind of explore this 
absolute mystery, we, this situation we appear to be finding ourselves in, really. And it's kind of framed as non-duality. You know, we just appear to be in this absolutely miraculous mystery, and this is kind of a way of exploring it. There's this idea that our true self is in some place far away. This moment is not good enough. It's not there yet. I'm not there yet. I have to be good enough to be accepted into the realm of completeness. What do we really know? All we have are symbols, a bunch of representations. It always comes back to the same thing. You know, I can know I am and that something appears to be happening, although I don't know what that is. Experience is happening, awareness is happening. I don't have a clue what this is anymore. And being comfortable with that fact, that leaves the door open for freedom because you know that your interpretations can't possibly be the thing, realising you were never in prison. There is just simply the flow of isness, and that is what you are. You don't need to try and navigate, fight, block, accept. Uh, it's all accepted, not by me as a person, but by me as reality. You are seeking reality in reality as reality. But the more you investigate into it, you can only find just flow. You don't you don't find something caught in the flow when you really sort of investigate into it. It's this magnificent unfolding of just absolute mystery. This isn't a philosophy, this is just completely within your experience. Every part of reality is the whole. And the ultimate mystery is that there is no mystery. We live in the worded world and the wordless world. And in the worded world, that's the world, again, we're most familiar with. But then there's this non-conceptual aspects of every experience. We discover that there is this freedom that is kind of the fundamental, inconceivable, mysterious basis of everything. When we delve into the nature of any experience, we can discover what we might say is equally present in all experience. And no matter how you're describing the, the phenomena, it's beyond description. That's true of the greatest pleasure and the greatest pain, that they're both indefinable, they're both outside of any box of any interpretation. Consciousness inherits a conceptual framework through which to perceive and interact with itself. The mind seeks to try and resolve the conceptual with more concepts. We've taken ourselves to be that mind and words and we've taken the words to be the truth. In spirituality, if we can even call it spirituality, we're not seeking to reconfigure concepts. We're seeking the actual nature of the conceptual, of the mind, of anything that can be known. Just have a really good look directly, that's the beginning. Everything that you are experiencing is you. You are the whole experience. It's all the same source. Whatever is making the planet spin, is making the trees grow and your cells regenerate, it's an unfolding of just incomprehensible, inconceivable intelligence. It's now, and it always is now, it's just this. It's not about upgrading anything or redefining anything. It's just about the suchness, the isness of this timeless moment in which you are absolutely engaged because you are it. You literally only ever find yourself. Everywhere you go, you only ever find yourself. The stories that the mind is telling is just a thought, it is just a story. It's not ever really true. You know, we have a certain view, but we don't really know. When we really go into the sensory reality, there's really nothing solid there at all in the space of awareness. When you actually tune into the actuality of the body, it's not solid at all, and it's not separate from its environment. The whole spiritual path is really just about seeing through the delusion. The more we recognize the fluidity of everything and the insubstantiality of all our ideas, the more we're able to be at ease with things being exactly the way they are. Which doesn't mean we might not do something to change them. One minute there's this transcendence or bliss or something, another moment there's this personal story, and I don't feel like we can really dismiss either one. 
but there can be a noticing that the whole thing is one whole appearing in this aware space. We're a tiny little dot in, in that which has no reference point to anything because it's just limitless space in all directions. Where's the coherence in that? Where's the logic in that? It's an ever ongoing open-ended exploration, isn't it? Just just opening your eyes, looking around the world, being just being directly nakedly with what is. It is unknown, but it's not unfamiliar. We're also absolutely intimate with it because we are it. Like a wave in the ocean, Alan Watts said, you are not a stranger here. You are not a stranger. Things, all phenomena arise in you and from you. The one experiencer that is verifiable. The dropping of the need to explain the need for answers, that's the kind of natural flowing with whatever this is. There's the sense that what is here right now is unreality. It doesn't feel right. It's not okay. I want to find reality because reality is home. To transcend what is here, to get to something pure, something vast and absolute. That desire and that search takes the form of, I want to find peace, I want to find love, I want to find whatever it is. So then it becomes an object. Mm. If there wasn't in reality, it's that. It's those fantasies of what isn't here yet. A movement away is the denial of what is here. If you want to find reality, then look to what is actual. Because what is actual is factual. It has the taste, you could say, of reality. What is actual is real. And that's not a philosophy. It's just the noticing of what is here and now. And the invitation is always to inquire for yourself not to take our word for it or anyone else's word for it. Here, whatever this is, this is where it seems we get to play and explore and test out and, and to feel and go through all the emotions and go through all the, the whole spectrum of experience from light to dark, from dense to soft, uh, fragmentation to wholeness, manifestation to the unmanifest, contraction to expansion. Delve in. You can't not delve in because you're already fully in it because ultimately you are it. You can't separate the experiences along that spectrum from the experiencing itself. There is something about like making peace, as it were, with that spectrum of experience because the package deal is that you get the rough with the smooth, you get the light with the dark, you get the pain with the bliss. It's not about kind of pursuing one side of those polarities because that misses the point. Each side of the polarity needs the other side to actually be what it is. And that's, that's the yin-yang nature of existence. And so it's like, make peace of that. You know, that is ataraxia. The recognition that the depth of the ocean is seamlessly at one with its superficial waves. And so it's not really a making peace. It's the noticing of what already is, of what you already are. All of this is contained. All of it's totally allowed to be as it is. And while even in the midst of kind of like the turmoil of it, mm. there's a kind of a background piece, and I can't really say what mm. that is. If there is a non-dual, all-encompassing reality, this must be it. If that is seen, if that is recognised that there's only one reality, and this is it, however it's appearing, that's the end of the search. This is it here and now. Even though it doesn't look like your fantasy, it's this. It's not about reaching a certain state. It's about reality. And reality is here now. It's intimately familiar. We're fully engaged with it. Because what else can we be other than this? The actuality of experiencing. The fact that it can be anything, that is love. That's freedom. So we've got experience. You know, that's our facts, whatever that is but then we can split it. Non-duality is true, it is all one. It's one experiencing, but you can within that split it up into an infinite amount of different experiences. So it's both are true and kind of beyond both as well. Uh, you can't pin it down, no matter how convenient that would be. So it's this open-ended way of exploring, being nakedly with what is, just what is here right now, what is it? and how can we explore this in the most honest and direct way. 
non-duality can sound really kind of obscure and abstract and complicated but it's actually not it's just coming back to the absolute simplicity of what is before you start breaking it up and complicating it we've added dividing lines where there are none our human mode is to judge and compare and reject and try and accept some things and reject others and make, get more of this and less of that and this is bad that's that's good and that's what we call duality that's what you know the buddhists call samsara is all of this kind of this perfect seamless whole split split apart into infinite amounts of different segments however many ways the mind wants to split it you can keep splitting it forever and actually it's all equal <laughs> prior to kind of that thinking mind coming it's all very equal it's all made of the same stuff we have to out of thin air create a context in order for these things to appear bad or good first of all in order to know what we're doing to function so that's fine if we can hold that context lightly and not hold it as an absolute <laughs> then that's the key really isn't it somewhat ironically whatever we deem as absolute is always going to be a restriction or a limitation of reality but it's only a conceptual narrowing it's not a true restriction not a true contraction not a true limitation that is the sort of paradoxical situation of it it's never wrong for the things things to appear that's in itself is another kind of layer on top of the confusion is that these thoughts these feelings these ideas we have are wrong they shouldn't be appearing i've got to get rid of them somehow and that's not it at all it's questioning what are these things like what what even what is their substance what are they made of what what has caused them to arise what are they what we're really seeking is reality beyond any kind of limitation of conceptual storytelling yet everything perceived everything conceived is nothing other than that anything is an opportunity to to kind of go back there it go back through that door you know just go through the door of of your thoughts of your feelings of your confusions your delusions your misinterpretations your beliefs notice what they are for a second they're made of the absolute so if you can see them like that if you can see that what they really are then all of the these things suddenly become not a problem they're all everything is equalized experience is the great equalizer because it's equally itself there's only reality being itself expressing itself seemingly losing itself seemingly finding itself but always reality always present always what you are and as reality you don't actually block out appearances of yourself whatever is here is all held with true equality um, we can go into the whole story of awakening we can go into the story of awakened people and me becoming more awakened in the future but that, I think that all kind of misses the point awakening is not it's not a static stagnant fixed thing it's not a thing an event an experience that happens one day awakening from the dream it's like a constant awakening from the dream what you are has always been awake but as long as the dreaming goes on the invitation is always there to, to rediscover that awakeness it's about discovering something that's already awake here and now what is already awake here and now what this is really about at its core is the end of suffering not one day in the future, but discovering that here and now. What is it here and now that isn't suffering? Even in the midst of the experience of suffering, in the midst of pain, in the midst of fear, in the midst of sadness, discovering that which is not suffering, that which is which is at rest. Well, what What is at rest here and now, even when the waves in the ocean are crashing all around? Can we discover the ocean in the midst of that, in the midst of the waves, the ocean that is not seeking? So it's, it's no longer about one day I'll stop seeking or one day I'll become enlightened or it's not about one day anymore it's about what's true here and now and for me that that's all awakening can really be because there is no tomorrow again it's coming back to present experience and it's discovering what is already awake here and now no matter what's happening so all these waves appear and disappear in what you are but this is why I love the analogy of the, the waves in the ocean because if what you are is this ocean then what you are 
is inseparable from all the waves that appear. It's not who you are and everything else, you see. It's not two things. Who you are ultimately is inseparable from the appearance of these thoughts, these sensations, these feelings. So there's this total intimacy and inseparability right at the heart of present experience. And that's always there. You see, that's something that doesn't come and go. The ocean is always there. No matter how the waves appear, whether they're soft, gentle waves or strong, violent waves, what's always present is the ocean because the ocean is present within all of those waves. The ocean isn't even behind the waves or above the waves or beyond the waves. So the the ocean, it's in these thoughts, these sensations, these feelings, this is the ocean. And this is ultimately what everybody is seeking. What everyone's looking for is the ocean. We're looking for the ocean in time. We look for it in the future. One day, one day I'll find the ocean. Um, but really, everything that we seek is its contained within present experience. This is the acceptance that everyone's looking for as well. Because the ocean, what you are as the ocean, accepts unconditionally all the waves that appear. Because it is all the waves that appear. Acceptance is simply a, a matter, simply a matter of noticing what's already appearing. What's already appearing in present experience has already been accepted. It's already been allowed in. It's simply a matter of effortlessly noticing what's already been allowed, what's already been accepted. Just noticing what's already there. The sort of primary idea we have is of being somehow separated from the whole, the whole of reality. So we imagine we exist as a as an independent creature, like a wave imagining it's somehow separate from the sea. And then so we're gonna go find the sea. We're searching as humans to feel at home, right? That's, a, that's an instinct we have. This isn't home, therefore I'm gonna go find it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do all these practices and inquiries and I'm gonna find home. All there is is home. Home is reality. It's the reality of home. We are the expression of some ocean of existence of the totality and where is there separation look and see if you can find separation anywhere conceptually we can conceive of separate objects but experientially we don't actually experience separation we experience experience and experience doesn't have boundaries explore the field of experience we can discover the nature of this in a sense and the way in which it doesn't collapse into definitions the way in which it is not actually divided we can discover that by looking at our experience and see if the ideas have an empirical basis in experience there's a kind of relaxing of the search for something else the search for an answer the search for the solution to the apparent problem the real equanimity is in the discovery that there's only equanimity the wave-like movements of the mind are being moved by the ocean of reality, the ocean of existence that is moving all waves. You know, everything is that. Everything is the totality. We're all familiar with the metaphor of the ocean of life or reality and the waves of impermanence, the waves of duality, creations of that substance. Yes, it's, it's a sort of, it's a nice way to think about this, but it's still not still not it. Even if you found that unifying basic substance or essence of, of life that creates all things or out of which all things are created, I mean, how would you quantify that? There would be no way to describe it because it's all there is in a way. And it would be impossible to talk about it as an essence, as a material. You know, in Hindu philosophy, they talk about the three gunas, attributes or qualities of the manifest. Maya's palette. So the gunas being rajas, motivity, activity, tamas, ignorance, darkness, dullness, and sattva being clarity, wholeness, purity, harmony, etc. If that was a spectrum, if those gunas are a spectrum, on one level it seems the closer we get towards sattva, the kind of closer we get to those qualities that we desire, that feel like home. So on one level, you can talk about it in that sense. It seems there are conditions that facilitate clear seeing, recognition, expansion, which is why a lot of spiritual systems focus on cultivating more sattva. But again, that quality of harmony, clarity, openness, 
It's not the end in itself. It's not that sattva is more reality than tamas or rajas. It's that these three are flavors of reality, which on a relative level, either contract or expand the focusing of experiencing or awareness. But here's the paradox. Experiencing or awareness can't really be limited. And why does it seem as if it can? Well, that's I don't know. Why is it that we seem to experience life as a focal point, detached from life? Perhaps there is no why. And this is where we can get into questions of illusion. Yes. If you go right to the absolute core teaching, so to speak, of, of those traditions, they do seem to bring nirvana and samsara are one. Yeah. Experiencing embraces all of what is experienced, you know, naturally, effortlessly, without any doing, without any trying. This present experiencing is unlimited, undivided, and contains every expression of the same experiencing, apparently appearing as different experiences. This boundless embrace of it all right now. If there is this sort of possibility of noticing that embrace, and how that happens is, is a mystery really, but it's subtle and very simple. Anything can be here, can't it? Anything can be experienced. It's not like it's suddenly allowed to be experienced. Uh, it always has been. It's not about changing anything or stopping anything. It's more a, an acknowledgement of what already is the case. And that can experientially feel like relaxation. It can experientially feel like peace, but it doesn't have to. The experience of non-duality is your present experience. Our direct experience is saying this instant is in the most radical kind of flux and flow and fluidity and that, that's our experience from instant to instant. It's, and so our perceptions vanish as they're perceived. The arising of this perception is also its vanishing. If we look at it you know, with some care and curiosity, it will reveal the impossibility of definition, the impossibility of conceptualizing what this is because how do we define something that is forever shifting? Well, well we can't. If we want to find the wholeness, <laughs> the totality, the oneness, then we have to look somewhere other than all this distinction and differentiation. That's just constantly telling us there's this and there's that. We have to discover what it is that everything is, <laughs> no matter how this moment is being characterized. Meanwhile, there's this relentless constancy, this fact of of the beingness of everything, the existence of everything, no matter how it's being described. And that's where we discover the totality that is everything, that shines forth as all of this that we characterize in the different ways that we characterize it. But the totality is that which is inclusive of everything. What we're calling the interpreting mind, what's doing that? That seeming splitting and dividing and turning into the totality into seeming pieces. What's doing that? That's the same thing that's doing everything, which we can't really say what that is. What is giving rise to this moment? The totality, the perfection that's the fundamental basis of everything. There's a beauty in, in what is, even when it's difficult, you know? And that beauty is, is a beauty that again, like perfection, it's transcendental. It doesn't have an opposite. It's a beauty that's inclusive of all things because it is all things. There's nothing else but that. There's only one reality. It's an unthinkable energy that bursting forth as each instant, unthinkably intelligent. The pure presence of this radical, open-ended, unstoppable embrace of everything. What we think of as our, our little isolated, separate, subjective selves is absolutely indivisibly none other than the boundless, absolute reality. That's what we are. We, we seem to live in a world in which there uh, appears to be a lot of certainty about what everything is. All the things that we've grown accustomed to knowing what they are, the presumed objects and events of the world, 
and the world itself. It often has the whiff of, of incompleteness, something lacking. That's one perspective, the perspective of separate phenomena. And yet, no matter what it is that we think we know what it is as a phenomena, if we enter into that phenomena in a sense, explore its nature, we just never arrive at the final conclusion of like, oh, I finally arrived at what it is, you know? And yet, it's not possible to do that really. And then that recognition that this is beyond comprehension it's free of problems because it's free ultimately of any definition. There's not some greener grass on the other side, like because this is always it. Whatever this is that's somehow being here and appearing as all of this, no matter how it looks, it remains that, because what else could it possibly be? Boundless, seamless, indivisible infinity of existence. It seems to be a certain, within a certain bandwidth that we really care about resolving this, realizing we can't get to an answer, you kind of enter that state in a way, outside that small kind of bandwidth and into kind of the unknowing. And you come to a place where the questions no longer matter. Yeah. You're not actually lost in anything. You're not worth it than this. You know, everything is just an appearance of that. It is unknown, but it's not unfamiliar. It's so familiar, so intimate, so immediate, so actual and factual, actually. Not that there are facts or Yes. pieces of information about it that are definite or absolute but it is factual as in it's here now unavoidable like this for all we know this could be the absolute knowing of it this moment right here right now this actual immediacy from a sort of scientific or philosophical point of view there is that movement towards knowledge facts data information that could explain what this is yeah. but you know, maybe there isn't something to know beyond this isness. Mm. Like what you were saying about measurement, it's like the tool of measurement creates the measurement in a way. Without the tool, there is no measurement. Yeah. That's not even a thing. Yeah. We can't say what the absolute reality of reality is. The dropping of the need to explain the need for answers. That is the relaxation, that's the relief, that's the rest, that's the kind of natural flowing with whatever this is. And you don't even need to call that something. Yeah. It's an ever ongoing, open-ended exploration, isn't it? No matter which way you explore this, if you take it to the absolute extreme of your, say, let's say, method of exploration, whether that's through science or, you know, um, just just opening your eyes looking around the world being just being directly nakedly with what is or meditating or yoga yeah. or whatever else you kind of come to the same place which is the questions eventually dissolve actually why why do i need to be certain about this why do i need to know what's going to happen yeah. and then actually kind of relaxing into the fact you don't know it's yeah it's it's never questioned it's kind of like yeah i I, I assume that I need to know. I assume that um, I have to know what this is and I have to know what's going to happen and I have to know what's going on, essentially. But and it's like there has to be coherence here. There has to be a conclus conclusivity here. Like, <laughs> But actually, what if it turns out it's actually incoherent? Um, actually, what is is totally illogical, inconclusive, What's wrong with that? What is actually wrong with that that fact? In a way, that fact uh, is is more is is more open. It's more liberating. It doesn't, you know, if it, if, it, if reality was just stuck to our ideas about it and our conclusions about what we think it is, then that would probably <laughs> I don't think that would actually be very a very satisfying outcome. So actually, the real prize is is yeah. in that you know irresolvable sort of nature of it oh well, it's sanity isn't it because that is the that is the nature of whatever this is it's it's that constant flowing uh, fluidity um moving shape-shifting uh, and i think the need for certainty comes from this need for security need for stability because of the exclusive identification with certain experiences and then that need for those certain experiences to to remain, to stay constant. Because, you know, that, that word certainty points to something that is fixed, it is settled. It's not variable, it doesn't fluctuate. There's no ambiguity, no confusion. Yeah. That's not how things are. <laughs> 
That's a human mode, isn't it? Whatever we might call non-dual understanding or realization or awakening or whatever, it's just, the, it's just kind of an acceptance of how it is, an acceptance of everything, including our human foibles and our opinions and our moments of upset, our moments of resistance. It's really, you know, just accepting more and more, not as something we do, kind of, but a kind of natural outcome, I think, of, of recognizing the uncontrollable nature and the, and the wholeness of it all. Recognizing that whatever life moves me to do is a happening of the whole. It's a happening of the totality. It's not an individual little me, which doesn't even really exist. Everything that I'm calling good or bad is part of this totality. At a deeper level of magnification or whatever, we can't even find it or pin it down or anything else. And at the same time, we can't ignore or dismiss the dimension of reality in which we, which does depend a lot on conceptualization and memory and all of that. That's the dimension in which we live our everyday lives. The most helpful thing I can do really is just to stop trying to do something and just be with the bare actuality of the feelings themselves, just the sensations, the energy. But there's nobody inside here who can kind of make that happen. There's just ever unfolding subtleties in this whole exploration of reality. And it's really important not to fixate on any particular kind of way of, of conceptualizing it, exploring reality. And I don't feel like there's some final landing place or some ultimate conclusion. It's more like an open exploration, you know, like this moment aspects of a seamless, unfolding, ever-present whole that doesn't really have any borders or divisions. Like the ocean, you know, it has a lot of different waves and movements and stuff, but it's one ocean. When you just go into something deeply and, and, and you just sort of tune into that presence, that beingness, that whether it, whatever shape it's taking, whether it's taking the shape of pain or pleasure or whatever shape it's taking, there is something there that's that's quite wonderful or ecstatic or radiant an aspect of this undivided totality and you can't pin it down it's a possibility that can be discovered and explored we are this infinite indescribable inconceivable reality full of itself absolutely in love with itself just incredibly we've managed to condense it down to our tiny little stick figure ideas about it and we've believed in those ideas we know ourselves through the play of opposites when there is a narrowing we suffer and then we feel that this is me it could be any experience with which we identify it's like forgetting that the sun is there because it's being eclipsed by the moon and that becomes our reality. That's all there is to reality is that. Reality is appearing to itself, just appearing in different forms, but you forget the context within which it's appearing. You see that you're not limited by this, that it's not your entirety. Nothing is out of place because it is the actuality of life right now. You can hold it all, you can contain it all. You're free from it, but it's completely free to have that particular expression. We're not trying to redefine anything. We're seeing if our definitions are valid. We look around for this thing called reality and we have a look at the obvious fact that if there is a, a reality which is all inclusive and the ultimate reality that would bring completeness or whatever we're after, we're overlooking the fact that, well, if that is actual, then all of this must be none other than that. It's just absolutely obvious, isn't it? But it's not obvious in a way we can communicate or describe or think about in any way whatsoever, but it's immediately obvious. Yeah. And at the same time, every word, every object is that. So you can't not talk about it. You can't not find it. In a way, it's not a mystery because it's not hidden and it's not secret. It's, I guess you could say it's an open secret. But it, it's not hidden, um, so therefore it's not a mystery. But in another way, it's a mystery to the mind and to the body's senses because it's not comprehensible. No thing in existence has a particular cause. 
the entire universe contributes to the existence of even the smallest thing. Nothing could be as it is without the universe being what it is. When the source and ground of everything is the only cause of everything, to speak of causality as a universal law is wrong. The universe is not bound by its content because its potentialities are infinite. Besides, it is a manifestation or expression of a principle fundamentally and totally free. Every event is the effect and the expression of the whole and is in fundamental harmony with the whole. Reality is simple, all is one. Harmony is the eternal law. The law of balance reigns supreme. There's the light of experiencing, the light of awareness. You are experiencing, you are aware, you are conscious, and your experiencing, your consciousness, your awareness enlightens each expression. It enlightens, it illuminates the known, and the known being this seamless display of experience expressions of the same light that you are that is enlightened and enlivened by your experiencing so you are already enlightened in that sense it's not like you have to attain experiencing or awareness you don't have to attain that what else is there where else is there and it's what you are that nowness and that nowness is full of potential absolutely brimming overflowing with possibility and that's what you are, your pure potentiality, your pure possibility. This experiencing, this awareness is already freedom. There's nothing to cultivate. There's nothing to do or undo. Presence is what is. This is presence right now. Like, regardless of what's going on, this is presence. We cover it over with other stuff, our way of thinking about life and the way we interpret. And that's what we call not present anymore distraction but distraction occurs within presence it's within the context of presence <laughs> so there's nothing but presence and that so the intellectualizing is more of the same isn't it more of the presence but it's dressed itself up as intellectualizing and and philosophizing and uh, conceptualizing you know it's not that it's useless it's good for functioning in everyday reality but it turns out that all of our ideas about life all of our interpretations can't be verifiable and all of this stuff that I've created appears within my experience within my awareness in meditation that's what I came to realize after a while after trying you know quote unquote to meditate um, after a while you get into a state where you realize you're not meditating you're being meditated what it's like it's just happening completely by itself you're not making any of it happen the kind of the idea of it's just an idea that you'll make it happen that kind of eventually sort of subsides whatever that little functioning in the in the brain or the mind or whatever it is it kind of sort of takes a back seat and you realize that it's all happening by itself and that's kind of like you know not to make a conclusion out of that and say oh there's no self there's no doer or anything like that but just to see that that's that's another way of being with this that's another yeah exploration of this it shows that, oh, actually things aren't as solid and simple as I thought they were. It's actually very subtle and very, you know, almost, well, you just can't, you can't conclude it in any way. Just very subtle and very, oh, I don't know the word for it. <laughs> There's a word there somewhere. Well, it's so subtle, there is no word. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the one. <laughs> you know, it is an exploration, isn't it? And it's absolutely fine to use a tool but put it down once you've used it mm. you know experiencing seems to be tuned in to this spectrum of experiences all the various qualities that we experience in life you know the spectrum is seamless it's like for whatever reason there's this kind of urge to pursue a certain part of that spectrum or to actually go beyond the spectrum you know, to find something better, basically better than this here and now, there's only reality. 
it's all in one place, it's all now. But some of us seem to need to go through all this stuff to then eventually realise, no, it's all the higher truth, it's all one truth, there's no higher or lower truth, it's all reality, just kind of like whatever is making these absolutely ecstatic, blissful states that you might have in um, deep samadhis is the same functioning, the same engine, whatever's driving this, that is in your deepest misery and despair. Like, it's nothing different. It's all made of the same whatever that is. It's all that same fact of experiencing. Whatever that is, is is present throughout. And there's nothing actually other than an idea or an interpretation that says it's any different. There's no lines, there's actually no what dividing walls. You can't avoid reality. Can you find anything that isn't real? But can you actually find unreality? That's the real question, because we can talk about searching for reality, but actually, can you find anything that isn't real? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever's happening, is any of that unreal? It's like, mm. yeah, we can talk about unreal things compared with real things. Like, a pirate copy of a film is, is not the real copy, but actually, the movie itself is real. You can talk about a counterfeit uh, piece of artwork in comparison with a, a true Picasso, but it's a real, it's still a real mm. painting. Attaching something to the end of the statement, your true nature is, is always going to be a half-truth or an incomplete truth mm. my true nature is is this that's all i can say and and this seems to include every expression along that spectrum of experience yeah and therefore if it's just this and all of this whatever this is then there is no false there is no unreal you're actually infinitely more than you've taken yourself to be you're not this contracted little thing you are that but you're also way more than that and you're not trapped you're certainly not trapped in that we have language, we have concepts to describe the myriad things being experienced and including myself. But the inquiry is, let's start with experience. What is this experientially? What is the actual experience? And that's all we can actually investigate. What's actually here? It can't be denied that something's here. It's like an actual palpable presence that's here. We could call it life, certainly, existence. What is it that we're experiencing when we describe any, any element of it? But what is it? There's really no answer to that question ultimately, but it's powerful to see that we don't arrive at a final conclusion when we feel our way into what's here, what's present. What's actually palpably here is just here with no, no precedent. And so in a sense, it's without context. It's without any prior framework of knowledge to contextualize it. Like the starting point is this. It's really fun and illuminating to come back to the bare bones actuality of this instant, of this explosion of reality. It's a state of constant becoming, this constant opening. But it actually never quite becomes anything definite because it doesn't stop. And it's astonishing to just feel that. Are you holding still, like, as a being? The beingness is, it's alive, isn't it? So how, how could you define anything that you call the self? You can't grasp hold of it because there's not something there to grasp hold of. Just look, <laughs> just look and see that the ways we categorize people, places, and things is a nice fantasy, but it's not an actuality. The seemingly multiple layers of objectivity, subjectivity within experience. But one thing we can be sure of is, is the experience, right? Mm. We don't find any solid entity that is experiencing. We only find the experience of this apparent entity. Yeah, exactly. And we can't say what it is, why it is or how it is. Those kind of are meaningless definitions, aren't they? Like saying why, how, and they don't actually apply. And once you start to let go of those, it's not like you have to forcefully let go. The mind eventually kind of just realizes it can't, it can't do it. It's like, I can't grasp onto anything here. And eventually the mind gives up. Mm. But all we can really do is sum this up with three, three words, which are the same word, which me and Nick often say is just experiencing, yeah. experiencing, uh, experiencing. 
there's a certainty of something being here. The presence is quite certain. What it is, is entirely uncertain. What we're looking for is here as this presence. And it's already here before we ever start to look for it, before we ever do some practice to get ourselves into it. Reality is just here and it's here inexplicably, this explosion of life. We, as an individual that imagines ourselves somehow seeking the presence of reality, seeking to get ourselves more connected with it, more present to it, there is the presence of reality showing up as everything. That is already the case. The presence doesn't need to be achieved or cultivated. This moment is the achievement of presence. You and I, whatever we imagine ourselves to be, are none other than the cosmos itself. This absolutely seamless whole that has no pieces or parts. There's not anything to grasp hold of, to manipulate, to accept or reject. There's not anything that could either represent a benefit or a threat because they're not separate things. There's just seamlessness. That's the peace that passeth understanding. Everything is the movement of this liberated ocean of existence. Every experience is a doorway into infinity because everything is made of infinity. The absolute unfathomable energy of the universe. You might start out going, not this, not this, not this. And then actually I'm all of this. And yeah. what is this? And you kind of bring the two together in the end. Yeah. You're not the body, you're not the mind. You're not this, you're not this. Absolutely, but it's the half truth. I am the body. I am the mind. That is also a half truth. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's true, but it's not absolutely true. Mm -hmm. You are this body, but you're also the tree. Yeah. You're nothing. You're everything, and yet you're neither of those conclusions. To arrive there, you'd have to compare nothingness with somethingness, and there's no comparison. There's no duality. There's no ability to make that distinction. Our conceptual model of ourselves and our lives turns out to be what causes all the suffering and all the problems. The only fly in the ointment is our misinterpretation of it as it's limited, it's difficult, you know, it has entrapments, it has obligations, it has all of these orientations that typically weigh on us uh, as in our normal human orientations of what we think we are. Um, you know, life sucks and then you die sort of thing. Whatever the attention happens to be focused on, there's always more than that and always other than that actually present in the experience. So that right away is a, um, an opening out of the context of whatever the mind is holding things to be. One eventually begins to open to the fact that there is an inherent intelligence that's the intelligence of experiencing itself. And this inherent intelligence is extremely powerful. It's instantaneous and it can assimilate. It assimilates non-linearly and non-structurally. So as, as one becomes aware of this, the inherent intelligence and that one is in fact the inherent intelligence, that opens the door to a really um, uh, meaningful and assimilative engagement with all of these very non-linear <laughs> inconceivabilities that, that one discovers experientially. Reality itself turns out to be an absolutely magnificent, miraculous, perfection of, you know, beauty and eternality and profound meaningfulness and so on. It's even in the presence of uh, the normal human thoughts and modes and, and interpretations, this, this astounding, you know, freedom uh, is the fundamental condition. There's a detachment from the human drama of it, but there's an even more profoundly intimate engagement with the profundity of what it is in real time. The depth to which you can come to see that is the depth to which you can enjoy it, enjoy what it happens to be. Experience itself is entirely unresolvable. It cannot be pinned down, it cannot be resolved, it cannot be described, it cannot be conceived of. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't need to be because we have the real thing, so we don't need to to hit a handle on it. We have it. We are it. This never goes away. This is is beyond. It, it's not made of parts. It's not made of pieces. It's not made of anything whatsoever. 
it can be designated with the mind can get a handle on it. Of course, it contains anything that can be designated, but anything that can be designated isn't actually a thing and isn't actually a separate aspect. All there is is this, this actuality, which is completely manifest, completely explicit, and yet entirely ungraspable. So making the jump to noticing this actuality, it's always opening to itself, it's always exploring itself eternally, and it will never get anywhere. Well, the idea that the dream ends at night and we wake up into something called a world is actually just an idea, isn't it? We don't, there's no actually, uh, there's nothing, nothing called a dream in a world. It's just one flow of experience. That, um, and so what is that? How can you call one a dream? And what, one appears to have more consistency to it, appears to, um, and one appears to have looser rules. Does that mean anything though? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't actually, it's not saying what's, what's real and what's not real there that just means that one is more consistent than the other reality kind of takes on this very very odd quality when you really start looking into this and it almost takes on a dreamlike quality where you you feel like you've never really you never really stopped dreaming um and that's in, you know because there's nothing to compare it to as you say so what is real and what is a dream yeah what? yeah yeah well you can't even say what is real because you know, real yeah. implies unreal, just as reality implies unreality. There is no unreality. No, it's unreal. And because there is no unreality, we can't even say what, we can't even speak about reality. We can't say why. We can't say what it's all about, what the purpose is. And I don't know, but it seems to be an opportunity to play, to explore, to express, to create, to, to find, to lose to experience every possible experience <laughs> for no reason but maybe there is a reason maybe there's not you realize that there's nothing that can be held on to anyway yeah. so it's not even about letting go there's nothing to hold on to in the first place but then it's it's amazing isn't it how the mind then says but how do i let go of thinking that there is something to let go of <laughs> it kind of rapidly reconstructs something once a construct is seen through. It can't be about change yourself, improvement, self-development, although that will happen as well if it happens. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is here, all of this is nothing other than the same life, the same reality, just in that moment temporarily expressing itself as that. I mean, what this is about really is just getting really unbelievably simple about everything isn't it you haven't experienced anything outside your experience ever you know there's only here you know the there is in the matter when you you get there you're here so <laughs> it's um what is happening right now what can i say for absolutely sure right now experience is happening experiencing is experiencing and that's all i can say the thought of not finding it, not being it. The thought of, oh, sometimes I can see it, sometimes I get lost in my story, sometimes I get lost in the character and, uh, and, then, I, and then I have to kind of find it again. It's, it's all that as well. It's the losing, it's the finding, it's the thinking, it's the feeling. It's, uh, it's the dropping, it's the holding on. It's all that. Without any intervening space or substance or barriers or divides or distance, it, it exists immediately. and. Because of that fact, all must be that, that unnameable, that indefinable isness. It's just unfolding the way it's unfolding. A bird doesn't give itself a hard time for not having cracked the egg or a tree sprouting through the ground. But humans, for some reason, we're like, oh, I should be the hair there. I should be a Buddha by now. It's just ridiculous. This message is only about coming to know what you are who am I that's really the root of all of our pursuits we want to know what we are coming to a clean slate and just very simply noticing what's going on what reality is right here and now what are you right now not what will you become 
but what are you right now? You believe that you see an outside world. You must be this body. Everything you know about the body is objective. The body is an experience. You are not an experience. You are the subject. The I really is not this body mind, but that I is the subject. Therefore, the I is that present knowing, the present awareness, capacity of being aware. It's simply present without being an experience. To not be an experience means to not have any attributes, no way of capturing it. Can't put our finger on it, yet we cannot deny it. It's always there. It's always changeless and it's always unaffected. No matter what it changes in experience, that I is unaffected. That I is simply that undefinable presence of knowing. It's what you are in the deepest sense. The only thing we can say is that I am here, I am present, and I am aware. More accurately, I am the awareness. I am the knowing. That's really what I am. Didn't we didn't need to reach it? It's self-shining. Nothing is causing it to shine. Yet the experience is dependent on that for its shining. For its illumination, that experience is known because of you. You are there prior to the experience. You are there during the experience, and then you remain after the experience. What we call the world is really just experience, and what we call I really. The subject I, the capacity of knowing. We can also call that experiencing. You know that you exist because experience arrives. There is really no opposite. There is no experience outside of me. The wholeness of present reality. And well, even if you do arrive at what you consider as truth or a fact about anything, those facts, those truths are 
open to interpretation still and contradiction, purely subjective. And as you learn more about that thing, your definition or your concepts of that thing shift over time. You know, it happens to all of us, doesn't it, where we experience something, but we don't know at first what it is conceptually. We just experience. So like, you know, you're laying in bed middle of the night and you hear something and you don't know what it is, but the mind then sort of tends to tell a story, fill in the blanks, find something that is the closest based on memory. Or you're driving in the dark and you you see something on the road and the mind quite instantly says, oh, it's a cat, but actually it's a bag or something. The mind automatically jumps to uh, what it already knows and applies it to this, this fresh moment. Even if it's based on something from the past, what's in the past is based on what you've acquired through learning, through education, through what you've been told. Yeah. So we can't absolutely be certain of anything really, yeah. but the experiencing itself is something we can be certain of, but not necessarily what we experience. It's always itself, but it's able to be completely differentiated from itself. It's like kind of this initial flame from the sparkler, but it's all sparkling off in all directions in different colors. And But it's not, it's not ever separate from that original flame. Mm. Even though life is unresolvable, we're also absolutely intimate with it because we are it. Like a wave in the ocean, Alan Watts said, you are not a stranger here. Yep. All phenomena arise in you and from you. The one experiencer that is verifiable. In a way, the fantasy is that the waves are not the ocean, something removed, cut off from the ocean. And that's the effect of conceptualizing but of course, it can all be held in a loose way and be met with spaciousness. We do have an advantage in that we, uh, we are it. We are what we're exploring, you know, we are whatever this is. We can't take ourselves away from it. We are it. We are completely made of it and embedded in it, whatever that is. And so it's like, that's why we kind of, with this podcast at least, you know, this is as, as a mode of exploration, it's just one mode, of course. But we start with what we've got. What have we got here? What have we got right now? Let's, we actually have realized I am this thing that I'm trying to explore. What can I say for sure about this uh, right now and really deeply explore and look into it in every possible way, meditatively, through conversation, through, you know, visually, you know, sense, through the senses, uh, just every way of, looking at what what do we have right now as reality like i can't get this but i'm having a lot of fun exploring it for sure we never need to even conceptualize non-duality the, the idea it, it's the experience take take two possibilities one the possibility that what we are is a, a separate inside self located somewhere in the mind or somewhere in the heart, a separate knower, a separate feeler, a separate thinker, doer, chooser, decider, etc. Now, the second possibility is that what I am is not a limited located entity residing inside the body and the mind, but rather that I am unlimited, ever-present awareness, and that there are not seven billion different awarenesses but there is just one awareness. What do we know of these so-called objects, these so-called objects made out of dead, inert matter? All we know of them is, the, is perceiving, that is seeing, touching, hearing, tasting. Well, how dead is the experience of seeing or touching? Is, is touching made out of something dead, inert, called matter? Or is it just made out of the knowing of it? In fact, matter was an idea that the Greeks invented two and a half thousand years ago. It, it, that nobody's ever found this dead stuff called matter. Because all we know of matter, of so-called matter, of, is, is the knowing of it, the experiencing of it. And if we go deeply into that knowing or experiencing and ask what is it made out of is it made of stuff called matter or even stuff called mind 
No, it's not. It's just made out of pure awareness. It's made out of our self, totally alive with the knowing of it. So if, if we think, okay, all we know is this alive stuff called perceiving, seeing, hearing, tasting. This is not a, a new belief system. We're, we're not replacing an old belief system with a new belief system. We're actually replacing an old belief system with our actual experience. Love, happiness, peace. This is the experience of non-duality. Love is the experience of non-duality. Suffering is, at a fundamental level, it's an expression of love. It is our true self calling itself back to itself. It's saying, let go, let go, let go, let go of everything you thought was essential for your happiness. And then true happiness will shine. So ultimately, e even our suffering cooperates with happiness and, and, and therefore is an expression.
fundamentally it's it's this right here and now isn't it mm. what is needed to get here to this direct here and now this is experiencing maybe it seems as if something is required and if that appears within experiencing that's what appears if we're honest with ourselves we can't say what here what this what this moment is there is this kind of tendency to want absolutes to find an absolute you know through which i can understand myself through which i can understand life yeah and then get that stability that get that kind of final contentment peace and to be there yeah. and you see that in the spiritual search you see that in every kind of search it's kind of beyond any ideas we say about it it's a strange thing about it all it's completely in your face yet there's nothing i can say yeah. it's like reality is resonating within itself just because it enjoys kind of talking about itself it's like it's utterly and it would seem utterly in love with itself yeah it would definitely have a tendency towards wanting to know like absolutely and this is almost it's just the opposite direction to uh the way most people explore life they just like oh like grasping onto things to know like you know grasping onto a rock that's also falling with you when you fall off a cliff it's the same thing isn't it it's like just grasping onto something just can i just grab on but it's that's what we're doing really is just yeah. um trying to know stuff but actually we're fooling ourselves mm-hmm. we're just it, we're not knowing anything we're just um faking it we're trying to know pretending to know human beings seem to crave meaning this mm. orderly universe that seems to make sense that is predictable mm. that there's some kind of continuity and that the universe will kind of cooperate with your will you know your desires your needs and etc it's just an endless search isn't it it's, it can mm. seem like restlessness it is unresolvable it is ungraspable it is indefinable it is impossible to kind of pin it down and to conceptualize yet we do try or you know yet there is the experience of trying but hold it all in a very light way just be playful with it all you know it's a recognition yeah and and the commentary of what is already the case and that can seem experientially like letting go can you find an experiencer in there the experiencer itself is another experience within the ever-shifting flow yeah this is where it all is you know this is where any experience is going to be found it's going to be found here it's all going to be found here right now yeah because there is only this constant stable ground of, of experiencing which is also ever shifting dynamic flow of experiencing it's only ever going to be found here and now any characterization any concept any shaping it's a playground you know so if you want to find the opposites of anything deemed as negative that's also going to be found here in this immediacy of experiencing, which is always just open to any meaning. It's like, what even is ego? I mean, what is it other than this? It's all the same thing, isn't it? To call it ego is actually to draw an imaginary line in the sand and go, right, this part's the ego and this part's awareness. And then then you go further back and you find the ground of it all. And but where are these? I can't find these, these uh, little layers of experience anywhere. So to call it ego is almost to give to reify it well there's always this kind of ever shifting morphing flow of experience there's also a consistent experiencing that is absolutely foundational and never changing it's who knows what it is but it seems to be this kind of unlimited non-volitional responsiveness with a flow of phenomena but that phenomena is nothing other than the same experiencing. Yeah. There's an opening there to just recognise that you are always in the right place because there is only this place, there is only here, there is only now, there is only this. You are exactly where you need to be, not because of any kind of you know necessity based on a belief system, but because you can't be anywhere else. I mean, there's no possibility. <laughs> so you are absolutely exactly where you need to be. There's something which isn't a thing that just is totally receptive, Mm. boundless. Beyond that, we can't say much more. Mm. Just the isness of what you are. Within that isness arises a body with a mind and feelings and sensations. 
It's not a kind of coming together, making whole. It's the realization of wholeness, and it's you know it's that yin yang thing, mm. isn't it? It's it's absolutely seamlessly yeah. at one. It's everything and nothing, and it's it's the whole thing. It's all included, absolutely open to any meaning, but none of what is included can encapsulate the fullness of that inclusivity. Mm. It's inclusivity, but also nothingness at the same time. Whatever you say. It is. It is. You know what I mean? You know, that's how it's being experienced. This is, reality has got to include everything. Yeah. It's not, that, that was, what is realisation if not realisation of that fact? Because it can appear as everything in anything and it's also always itself. Then we can kind of love the world for what it really is and play with meaning. Yeah. If you are that timeless and the ultimate reality, then you must be this whole rich display Nothing is concrete, nothing is permanent. Mm. Uh, the only permanency is the ongoing, spontaneous flow of experiencing. <laughs> I mean, you can, as you say, you can, you can find meaning in it, but there's something about just letting yourself drop into the, not not finding any meaning in it, you know, kind of seeing, seeing where that goes, you know, a dropping into kind of, like, is there anything here mm. if I just let myself drop into not finding meaning? Uh, what, 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 what comes up? does anything come up can i just yeah. drop infinitely into that um and that's kind of it's an exploration isn't it as opposed to trying to find a position and saying it's like this it's like that there's the clue isn't it though that so many different people from so many different traditions have been exploring this in in a, a map just a massive variety of different ways yeah and there's, there's so many different perspectives of and and then how to frame that as well that's the clue, really, that they're all saying different things, that you can't land anywhere. I mean, what is this? Can we go straight absolutely into the unknowing of it and just not come up, not trying to actually come up with an answer that we can frame and uh, d d sort of a definition or a story about it, but just, just sort of almost sink into the depths of the absolute unknowing of it. And that's, that's actually a really... Um, sort of fruitful place to be, a really lovely place to be, very open, very uh, freeing. I, I don't know what, it's not something to be looked for, like, like a, oh, I yeah. need to feel the freedom of this now, I should be feeling the freedom because I've done the unknowing practice or whatever, but it's it's kind of just like, that just happens to be a side effect of, of that, yeah, emitting, that final emittance of surrender almost, of give, giving up, like, you know, <laughs> just going, I can't, I can't anymore, I can't try and, uh, find a story about this anymore and just just going into this moment and not coming up with anything it goes on forever and it just opens and opens and opens into itself um, and that's a beautiful place what else is there really other than that open responsiveness yeah and anything is possible in that yeah